Let's set up a couple key poses of our character doing something simple like a squat jump so we can understand the basics of setting keys and animating with Control Rig. To reiterate how we got to this point with Control Rig added as a track and sequencer, all we did was drag and drop the Control Rig into the editor and it automatically set this up for us. We also adjusted a couple settings in the sequencer. So for instance, we adjusted the frame rate from Unreal's default 30 frames per second to 24 frames per second since we're animating. We also enabled auto key so that anytime we adjust a control and the value is changed, it automatically sets a key to record that value. In this top panel for the animation panel, you wanna check on only select rig controls and that will ensure that you only select the controls and you don't accidentally select other mesh or objects in the scene. Notice when I select the body controller and I start to move it, it's moving in this stepped manner. And that's because we have snapping enabled. So when working with control rigs, I highly recommend disabling your snapping because that can cause some issues and confusion. To set a key on all of the controllers, I'm going to open up the controls and first select this index control, scroll to the bottom, hold down shift and click on this last control. And that will select all of the controllers in sequencer. I'm gonna just kind of shift around in my editor and then click on S to set a key. And this sets a key on all of the controls so that when we start to make adjustments down the timeline, that auto key is gonna help us out. So I'll go back to frame zero. Um, another way that we can access and select controls is to make a marquee selection around all of the controllers. So in other DCC tools, you might wanna left mouse drag to create that marquee selection. But of course, in Unreal, you're only gonna just navigate through your editor. So in order to make a marquee selection, hold down Control and Alt, and then left mouse drag, and that will create that selection around all of these controls. So notice there are a couple controls that got missed. So I can just fix that by clicking on Shift and also that Control and Alt and redrawing that marquee selection. And I could again hit S to set a key. For this first pose, I wanna kinda of create a more relaxed pose with his hands by his side. So I'm just gonna kind of move his hands into place so he kinda of looks relaxed. Same thing on the other side. For that second pose where he's kinda of squatted down, I'm gonna click here on the frames and enter six to jump to frame six. I can drag on the bottom of the time range slider to zoom in on my timeline to better see. And then for this pose, I'm gonna select the body control and then shift select the hand controls and then push straight down so he's in that kind of squat pose. I'll push him back. And then I'm gonna rotate his body control forward to kind of get him balanced. I'm going to shift select these two spine controls and rotate them forward. And then I'll select this final spine three control and kind of rotate that up so that his chest is kind of rotated up to have good form. And then I'll select his head and also kind of rotate that up. I'll select his hands and move them forward. And then I might actually also grab his pull vectors and move them in so that his elbows are closer to his body. And then I can also grab his foot controls and kind of rotate them out so his feet are splayed. Also grab his pole vectors and kind of move his knees over his ankles. And now notice there are not any finger controls. So in order to enable the visibility for the finger controls, select the root control and kind of scroll down until you see this box for finger control viz. I'm gonna check the box to turn them on. And here you can see the finger controls appearing. If I click on this button to go back to the previous set key, you can see they're missing. So just check the box again, and that'll set that key. For the next pose, when he's kind of jumped up into the air, I can borrow that first pose and then modify it. So I'm just gonna left mouse drag a marquee selection, and I'm using my middle mouse wheel to kind of scroll down to select all of these controls. I'll copy them by hitting Control C, and then I'll go over to frame 12 and paste by hitting Control V. And so now you can see He's back to that initial position. 
And then to make him jump, I'll shift select his hand controls and the body control, his elbow pull vectors, his knee pull vectors, and then his foot controls. And then I'll push him straight up as if he's jumping. And then I'll select his foot controls and rotate them down and kind of splay them out a little bit. Oops, let me try that again. Oh, that's why I'm in world space. So I want to be in local space um, for my rotation. So I'll hit um, control and tilde. And now that's what I'm expecting to see. So when I kind of splay the, the feet out, they're rotating in their own local space. All right, and now I'm going to try and get a bit of a nicer arch in his spine to kind of get a little bit of a nice line of action through his body. I'll grab his hand control and kind of push his hand out. I'll do the same with the other side. And now notice his feet are coming up off the ground, and that's because we need to set a key to keep them down on the ground. So if I go to that location X and enter zero, that'll pop it back down on the ground. And I select that foot control for the left and do the same. And now it'll be planted on the ground. There we go. OK, so now for his landing, I'm going to actually do the same thing. I'm going to copy all the keys for his squatted pose. Hit control C. And then maybe go over to like frame 18 and hit paste. And then I'll adjust this so it's not as extreme. So I'll grab his hand controls and his body control and kind of scooch him up. And then for that final kind of settling into place, I'll again copy that first pose. Copy control C and then control V. And there we go. So when I scrub through, I can kind of take a look at my key poses and see how that movement is interpolating between all the key poses. And I can certainly make some adjustments to make this look better. In this down pose, actually, I might also want to adjust my finger controls so that it looks like I have a curl. So I can select all the finger controls and rotate them in to kind of simulate a fist. And it's not going to be perfect, but at least kind of just enough to get a rough blocking. So if we want to do some further refinement, we can open up the curve editor and it's going to be similar to other DCC tools as well. So one thing I'm noticing is, for instance, when he jumps up, his feet are lifting right off the bat. And that's not something I want. I want them to stay planted so that he gets that full extension until he finally lifts up off the ground. So what I'll do is I'll shift select these location, X, Y, and Z. I'll left mouse drag to create a marquee selection around all of those different controls. And then notice right now I have this toggle time snapping and toggle value snapping. So if I hold down shift and middle mouse drag over, it'll keep that keyframe set in the same value, but I'm just kind of shifting it over so it stays on the ground a little bit longer. So let's see if I shift it over one more, how that looks. So that's a little bit. I mean, it does go into the floor, but again, it's a little bit better. We can always fix that later. So I'll do the same thing with the other foot. I'll shift select the location X, Y, and Z. I'll draw a marquee selection around that keyframe and I'll kind of push them over to frame nine. And so now that when I play that back, I can hit spacebar and I can see what that looks like. Looks like there's like a lot of popping around with those pull vectors. So that's also something else that we can fix. So again, I like to kind of click on this little arrow to make sure I'm on the correct keyframe. And let's kind of adjust these so they're not popping around as much. And on that final keyframe. It also looks like his hands get a little bit stretched too much here. So I could add a little in between to kind of pull them up to relax them. And that should also kind of help. Okay. So the other thing you might want to play around with is the type of tangent that you're working with. So again, if I click on the control, if I click on the curve editor and open that up and I select his body control um, and I click on that location X. So if I come here and select this and I kind of move it up and down, you know, I can um, interactively kind of move him up and down and make those adjustments. 
but just like a bouncing ball, you know, once he kind of squats down, we kind of want him to explode up very quickly. So have acceleration right off the bat. So what we can do is click on this um, break tangent, and that will allow us to then move this tangent independently of the other side so that we can kind of create a more dramatic extreme acceleration. So if I play this back, I hit spacebar, he does kind of explode up into the air. That can be something else to play around with. So very similar to other DCC tools as well. So yeah, you, again, you can kind of continue to play around and modify and adjust this and refine it so that it looks much nicer, but at least we have kind of the base key poses and an idea of how to adjust the different keyframes, copy and paste, set keyframes, and also adjust things in the curve editor. If you're familiar with animating and other DCC tools, hopefully much of this already feels quite intuitive.